Cool. Welcome everybody to today's live stream. My name is Jeff Fowler, Vice President of the Apartment Owners Association. We're very excited today about our speakers. We have two, it's a double header, and our first one's about cost segregation. If you don't know what that is, you're in the right place for sure. If you do know what it is and you've done it and you think you've just checked that box off, you really will wanna listen in and see whether it was actually done properly or not. And there's um, just such a benefit in knowing for sure that you've done it right, because you don't want to be audited and, and lose all of, all of those deductions that you could have. And if you stay tuned, at the very end of the presentation, our speaker is going to give you a very, very valuable um, gift. And it's worth, it's worth over $1,000. You'll want to be there. And so stay tuned. And then right after this one at 11 o'clock, we're going to have the, the uh, Prop 19 Aftermath live stream. So we have two live streams going on today. We're about to get started. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to invite you to join AOA. Uh, we're one of the largest individually organized apartment associations in the state. And what we do for people is we help keep them in the know. And there's a whole lot of things going on with laws. And there's so many different things that... You just don't know what you don't know. And so we have a magazine that we'll send to you every single month. You'll get that. You'll be able to look at it and see what's there. And uh, it's chock full of all different kinds of articles. And you're going to know what you need to know. It's going to help keep you in the know. We also have our advisors that are waiting for you to give them a call to, and give you property management advice. And uh, with everything going on, um, and so many different things changing. Uh, that's why people join and do that. And it's only $79. You get the magazine. You get a lot of other resources as well. I won't name all of them. But everything is our, what our goal is to help you make and or keep more money and also to make the process of providing housing for others more enjoyable and easier. And so that's just a little bit about us. And... Um, also, um, let's see what we have. Yeah, oh, don't forget to subscribe to AOA USA and you can hit the notification bell so that you have that. And whenever we have a live stream, you'll be notified and so you won't miss anything. It'll help keep you in the know. We also have a free newsletter e-newsletter that goes out and you can sign up for that. It's free, but you go to aoausa.com. You can sign up. And then every time there's an update, uh, information that you need to know, we'll have that there for you. So um, go ahead and do that as well. If you like it today, please give it a like. And if you know someone that might benefit from it, be a good neighbor and share that uh, with somebody else. And then that way uh, we'll all be in the know, which will be great. Our sponsor today is BDO. And they are a pr one of the largest... Um, a tax, accounting, financial advisory, and consulting firms in the country. They're actually a global organization. They've been around for over 100 years. That's a long, long time. And they have 60 offices throughout the United States. They have 650 uh, alliance uh, locations uh, throughout the states as well. So a tremendous business. So you can thank them for, for this and... They, we have joining us today the managing, managing director of the cost segregation practice at DBO. And he's been in the business for over 26 years. He has a unique knowledge that I think will benefit you today. And um, just his 26 years of experience, he was doing this for a long, long time. And his company actually merged with BDO. So very... Um, uh, seasoned veteran that will give you information that you never knew. And that wealth of information um, is what he's going to show you right now. It's my pleasure to introduce to you today, Jeff Hobbs. Now. Hello, everyone. This is Jeff Hobbs with BDO USA, and I am the uh, Managing Director for Cost Segregation Services. And let's get started. Uh, today, we're going to talk about cost segregation and how it delivers results every time it is applied. Uh, 
So what is cost segregation? Well, it's the process of identifying building components that are considered personal property or land improvements under the federal tax code. It identifies and reclassifies personal property assets to shorten the depreciation period for taxation purposes. This in turn reduces your current income tax obligations. So the Wall Street Journal quoted the IRS, the US Treasury Department in 2003 stating, cost segregation is a lucrative tax strategy that should be used in almost every major purchase of commercial real estate. Now guys, think about that. The Internal Revenue Service actually is telling you that cost segregation should be applied every time you buy or construct a piece of real estate that is depreciable. That's any, any size apartment complex, that's a single family rental property, a duplex, a triplex, the size doesn't matter. Cost segregation should be applied every time you make that acquisition. So let's look at a little bit of a, the history behind cost segregation. In the mid 90s, the Hospital Corporation of America was using what was called component depreciation, which in today's verbiage is cost segregation. But the IRS at that time wasn't accepting it, so they challenged their tax filings. The Hospital Corporation of America then sued the IRS and took them to court. It finally made it to the Supreme Court in 1997. Guess what? HCA won that landmark case, and at that point, cost segregation was invented. So in 2002, finally, the IRS consents to making those changes in the method of depreciation using the tax form 3115, and that was to be filed in the year that that change was elected. Taxpayers were permitted to catch up on all deductions from those previous years. Guess what? No amended returns are required for that. That's right. It uses the Internal Revenue Code 41A, which is the catch-up provision of the tax code, automatically carrying forward all those unclaimed depreciation dollars into the day, today's tax return. In 2004, the IRS realizes that people are using cost segregation more and more, so they develop a multiple thousand-page cost segregation audit techniques guide. This was used to review all cost segregation studies at that time. And then as it continued to develop in 2006, they started only auditing non-engineering based cost segregation studies because of the inherent baseless reallocation that people were taking when they heard about this case. And what that bottom line means is, is that it re requires those who have knowledge of and training in construction and or construction techniques, an engineer or architect. In 2011 through 2016, there were various bonus depreciation uh, allowed through stimulus packages from 30% up to as much as 100%. In 2018, qualifying assets that were placed in service after September 27th of 2017 became eligible for 100% bonus depreciation when cost segregation is applied. That's important to note because the, in, in that history, what that means is, is that any acquired and or constructed commercial real estate of any kind, beginning with September of uh, 28th of 2017, could have use and apply 100% bonus depreciation. So the cost segregation audit technique, Scott, actually has a quote that is important to us. The wide gap in makers recovery periods, and makers is an acronym for modified accelerated cost recovery system, provides a strong incentive for taxpayers to allocate or reallocate costs of long life property down to short life property wherever possible. And then there's a link right there that you can check that out yourself. Now guys, again, here the I is the IRS in their own audit techniques guide letting you know that you should be using the maker's depreciation model for your assets, whether it's multi-family, multiple buildings, or just down to a single family condo or single family rental house. So who can perform a cost segregation study? Well, the IRS chief counsel, meaning that their lead legal attorney wrote a memo stating in summary, 
that in order to apply cost segregation properly, it, it requires those who have knowledge of and training in construction and or construction techniques, or in other words, competencies, competencies in architecture, engineering, or construction. That could be a builder or a general contractor as well. The reason for that is very simple. There are so many tax codes that, that apply to building components that it re definitely requires those who have this knowledge because, for example, you might have a, a just a regular electric outlet, 110 electric outlet, that's a GFI outlet, but there's a GFCI outlet, there's a GFPE outlet. Each of those types of outlets have various life classes from five years as, to as much as 39 years, and it's based on its application. Well, obviously, somebody who's not trained in architecture or engineering with the, with the tax side of it would not know what the difference is and therefore would not be able to properly identify that asset for tax purposes. That is just one of tens of thousands of building components that, and land improvements that have to have that type of knowledge to identify. So when does cost segregation really make sense? Well, honestly, virtually always, just like the IRS stated. So have you paid taxes over the last three or four or five years? Do you think you're going to be paying taxes in the next few years? Well, if you're not profitable, you won't be, but that's what your idea, the purpose is, is to become profitable over time. Any type of rental property, condominium, duplexes, triplexes, fourplexes, regardless of the size, they all qualify and make sense. Will you be maintaining ownership at least two years or longer unless when you divest yourself of that asset, you use a 1031 exchange where you can kick that depreciation can down the road, whether it be profits or losses. And the reason for that is, is there is a recapture penalty whenever you sell that property, if you just sell it outright in the first couple of years of ownership. And all that penalty is, is simply giving back the depreciation that you took in the years that you took it. So why can't my CPA do this? Why can't my enrolled agent or tax attorney do this? Well, based on what we've just learned, it takes those who have competencies in architecture and engineering to be able to identify the assets as they're supposed to be taken. They're not qualified, in other words, according to the US, the IRS guidelines. However, we do work with your tax professional, whether it's a CPA or EA or whomever, to apply the benefits of our study to your tax return. And again, remember, the IRS chief counsel issued a memo that made it clear what constitutes proper methodology when applying cost segregation. So why would I want to do this? Well, there are many reasons, not the least of which are Internal Revenue Code tax compliance support for personal property and bonus depreciation. Oh, and by the way, guys, uh, my apologies here, but um, I need to let my guys know they need to move the slide. <laughs> so please forgive me, we need to move to slide number nine. Guys, my bad there. I'm, I'm way ahead of you guys, so let me know. You're there on nine, slide nine, okay, fantastic. So again, why would I want to do this? And by the way, guys, also too, to everybody who's on the live stream, we'll make available uh, this presentation in a PDF format uh, that you can go through that will have the live links in it. In addition to that, that we'll also make available additional information in PDF formats for, for different brochures, case studies, uh, testimonials, and everything available to anybody who would like to have that available to them. So back to the state. So why would I want to do this? Again, many reasons. First of all, the Internal Revenue Code tax compliance issues supporting personal property and bonus depreciation. You cannot take bonus depreciation without having a, a study conducted from an engineering perspective. Number two, time value of money. The dollar, your dollar is always worth more today than tomorrow. That's what uh, banking is based upon in interest. Never in the history of man has the dollar been worth more tomorrow than it is today. That's why you want to take advantage of the depreciation accelerated and get that bonus depreciation today. It reduces or temporarily eliminates your income taxes. Well, come, come on, think about that. The IRS, the entity that everybody loves to hate, is, 
allows you to take what's available to you but through the bonus depreciation rules and the personal property tangible property rules it ran it gives you a retroactive tax depreciation deduction to 1987 if your if your asset is that old or older or based on the year you placed in service so if you just bought the property a year ago or five years ago or 10 years ago you can get your depreciation that you have not taken using the old method, the wrong method, uh, in the current tax year automatically. So it can, at that point, when you're getting that kind of a huge deduction in the current tax year, it could possibly eliminate any income taxes that you have owed to you or owed it back in this current tax year. Uh, another reason is it meets the new tangible property regulations that allows you to take uh, assets from repairs and maintenance and versus repairs and capitalization rules, the safe harbor rules, and the de minimis rules. In addition to that, it also creates a documented audit trail in case you get audited by the IRS. That is very important because obviously if you're audited for any type of reason, you want to be able to walk the IRS through how you got to where you are on your numbers. Next slide. So what building components qualify? Well, let's, let's look at some. Process-related systems, which are all five-year assets, would be mechanical, electrical, plumbing systems within the, the, the property. Um, mostly in your in the kitchen or a bar area. There are some within the bathroom areas as well, as far as the uh, mechanical, electrical, plumbing issues. Uh, FF&E, that's fixtures, furniture, and equipment. <laughs> Those would be assets such as uh, crown molding, chair rails, wainscoting. If you look in the picture there, you'll see those items. Baseboards, toe molding. Uh, decorative features such as chandeliers or uh, wall sconces in the in a in the hallway or wherever they might be, and the different types of flooring like carpeting, LVT or VCT or VHT flooring, laminate flooring. Uh, these are all <clears throat> considered by the IRS temporary, uh, unlike a ceramic tile or something like that that is considered foundational. And then land improvements; those are fifteen-year assets. Those would be things like your landscaping, driveway or sidewalk, fencing, a patio or pool or deck, and uh, outbuildings or, or more uh, flagpole. I mean, any type of feature <coughs> that is decorative in nature for the land, other than the land uh, movement uh, and preparation for foundations and everything, footers for the building itself, qualifies as a 15-year asset. Uh, next slide, guys. So what are the steps in the process of applying cost segregation? <clears throat> well, you got to gather the needed documents. <clears throat> We're going to identify that list of documents uh, here in a couple of slides. Uh, you need to have a field or site survey conducted. Engineering computations are then conducted and applied to the asset. And then a preliminary report is issued and reviewed by our engineering leadership. These are the quality control guys who've got decades of experience. And then a final report is issued, and that's what's submitted to you and your tax professional, whether it's a CPA, EA, or whomever. The timeline typically takes about four to six weeks from engagement to the report issue. Smaller projects, uh, like a single family, condo, duplex, triplex, those types and sizes of properties, can typically be completed quicker if we're able to get out to your property to do that site survey in a, a timely fashion. Uh, projects that do not require a field or site survey can be completed in a shorter time. And in fact, uh, because we do have a, a what we call our online cost segregator, we can actually do projects uh, within a couple of days when that survey is not required. Next slide. So how much does it cost for a cost segregation study? Well, all of our study fees are based on these four criteria. Number one, size of the project. So how many square feet is the building? or how many buildings are there, and how many acres of land does it sit on? Number two, the complexity of the project. So what is it? Is it a multifamily, a restaurant, an office building, tenant improvements, single family rental? Uh, that uh, is important for us to know. Location of the project because of travel expenses per diem, because we're going to send somebody out again for that site survey, and that has to factor into it obviously as well. And then availability of the pertinent documents because less documentation means an increase in time to reproduce the substantiating data, 
for the IRS. And obviously, guys, we know, all know time is money. The great thing about it is, though, is, is we offer a performance guarantee of anywhere from 200 to 500%, depending on the size of your project. So projects that are under a quarter of a million dollars in cost basis uh, has a 200%, meaning a two to one guarantee. So for example, if you have a, a property that, uh, let's say it's a, that quarter of a million dollars and it's a $2,500 fee just to make something up, we're gonna guarantee a minimum of $5,000 in, in federal tax savings. State tax savings is on top of that. Uh, you can't get beat that with a stick. You certainly can't go to the to, uh, Las Vegas and, and get those kinds of odds for sure. Next slide, guys. <clears throat> so are there other considerations when considering cost seg? Absolutely. <clears throat> One of the first questions I get, look, is this going to cause an audit? Absolutely not, because we're placing you in compliance with the tax code under the maker's method of depreciation. That's what the IRS requires, and so that we meet that requirement for you. What if I'm audited? Do you provide audit protection? Absolutely. For the entire full three-year audit period, we're standing behind your you with the IRS for our report. Are there other benefits potentially available? Absolutely. <clears throat> Number one, there's an IRS form 3115 needed for any what's called look back studies that means if it, the property was placed in service prior to the open tax year right now the 2020 tax year is what's open and so therefore if your property was placed in service in 2019 or before it would require a 3115 <clears throat> remember <clears throat> and pardon me the 3115 is what allows you to go back as far as 1987 to get all those unclaimed depreciation dollars carried forward into the current tax year where you get that automatically. So no amended returns, meaning you don't have to pay your CPA or tax professional to go back and amend those returns. This one form, and again, a small fee does apply to have that form provided to you and your, your tax professional, but that prevents you from having to file those multiple amended tax returns and gives you the tax benefits today. Then also you can uh, challenge your property taxes using the, the benefits of our study. And the reason for that is, is we're giving you an engineering unit cost basis for all your building components so that whenever you have any type of, if you were to have any type of damage to your facility, uh, whether it be by flood or fire or, you know, anything like that, then you not only one, can you replace it and, and write off the remaining balance, your CPA can, because we're giving him the actual cost per linear foot per gallon of paint, per square yard of roofing or whatever uh, to be able to replace those assets and, and write off the remaining balance. That's very important because that way you don't lose the depreciation when you replace that asset. And then, like I said, providing that insurance replacement cost verification using that unit cost basis analysis. Okay, guys, next slide. So uh, what documentation is required? Now, you don't faint looking at this <laughs> lengthy list, okay, um, because most of you are only going to need a couple of those items, uh, or maybe three, because you've acquired it. But in this instance, let's just go down that, that list. Um, closing documents. So everybody's going to have a closing document. That's your HUD statement, uh, ALTA statement, your survey, uh, because that's what transfers title. Everybody's going to have an appraisal if you borrowed money because where that bank is going to put money into it, they're going to want to know that the value of it makes sense for them to be loaning the money against. So everybody's going to have those assets of those two things. And then a property tax statement. Again, that's usually part of your closing statements, but if you don't have it, it's available through your local property tax assessor's website. Very easy to obtain. And then a tax depreciation schedule or a tax asset detail. Most folks don't just know it as a depreciation schedule. This only applies if your asset is, is over a year old from a tax standpoint. So for everybody who has a, an asset they've uh, up, obtained, acquired, or constructed in uh, 2019 or before, you'll have this the depreciation schedule. And if you don't have it, your, your tax professional, your CPA accountant will have it and can provide that for us. If you built the asset, then construction drawings and the invoices related to that, along with the AIA documents, G702, G703. 
those documents are standalone documents as far as the IRS is concerned. Literally, if we got those AIA documents with the construction drawings, we don't technically, because the IRS accepts them, don't even have to do a field survey. We still do the field survey along with those documents because obviously there are site changes. There are always, you know, uh, uh, things that you see whenever the construction is going on that maybe you want to make a change in now that you've got it up. Maybe you want to move a wall. Maybe you want to move a door. Those are all uh, things that are done after the fact on those original construction drawings. And that's why that, that field survey makes a difference for us. And by the way, those G702 and 703s, technically, they're, those are considered master and itemized subcontractors pay requests. That's what is sent to you and your lender to, for them to be able to get paid every week. Definitely understand that a study is more expensive when you have no documentation. And again, everybody's going to have a closing statement. Everybody's going to have their appraisal and property tax statement. Most everybody will have their appraisal unless you pay cash for the asset. But those construction drawings and those things, if, if, if it's new construction and you don't have those, we are going to have to replace that using uh, RS means and Marshall and Swift valuation. So we're going to basically reconstruct those, ass those drawings using those two methods. And the reason is, is we want to prepare for an audit just in case you're audited. You prepare for the audit now, not three years from now, if you get that notice from the IRS. And then have to, us have to go back and look that information up and try to recreate it at that point. So we prepare for an, every, our, every study and every final report as if it's going to be audited, even though less than two-tenths of 1% are actually audited by lottery. Okay. Next slide, guys. So now what? Well, guys, look, be proactive. Ask yourself a simple but necessary question, and you may consider it a silly question. But it's important. Do I want to minimize my taxes as much as legally possible? <laughs> that may seem like a, a silly question, but it is important because if you do, look, take a couple minutes. That's all it'll take. Go online, complete our online questionnaire to learn how much you can save. It's a calculator that you can complete via that link. And again, we're going to provide this in a PDF format also through the links on the websites right now through YouTube and other sites as well. It takes a couple of minutes and you can know right then and there how much you can potentially save. If your assets worth a quarter of a million dollars or more, contact me directly. My email address is here, jhobs at bdo.com or my cell phone. I, I, I get thousands upon thousands of texts every month and calls from everybody. That's a, that's a great way to you know, get a, an in-depth cost-benefit analysis without any further obligation. It's important to know that that's the, way to, the best way to go about this. And real quickly, I know my time's running out. If your asset's under a quarter of a million dollars, don't fret. We do properties, and in fact, I just did 12 in Miami that average $52,000 in cost basis. We can make it work for you because our fees for those small properties are just 1% of the cost basis. So think about it. A $50,000 property, that's a $500 fee. That, that size property is going to give you about a $3,000 tax savings. So guys, question, does it make sense to trade $500 to get $3,000? In my book, and I think everybody else's, it absolutely does. Okay, guys, next slide. We're at that Q&A standpoint, guys. All right, uh, I'm going to open it up for any questions. Uh, Jeff, thank you for allowing me to be on here with you. Awesome. Thank you so much for the job that you have done there. And yeah, I mean, my, my jaw dropped when I realized that a, a CPA is actually not qualified to do the report without having the expertise of the engineer and, and all these others. So really just uh, great information and um, really glad that we can keep our people in the know. <laughs> and uh, so Absolutely. one question, one thing that you had mentioned when we had talked, and you didn't mention it this time, but how is the, the cost, you know, the cost in, um, in Oklahoma City is going to be different than what the cost is in San Francisco. So how is that accounted for? Do you guys account for that anyway? Well, well, we do. Again, and that's one of the four things that we look at is, is our travel expenses. Uh, uh, when we calculate the cost benefit analysis that we do and provide this that for the, for anybody, there's no cost or obligation to, to request a cost benefit analysis, <clears throat> but we, we literally take what those actual expenses are and, and 
for all intents and purposes, honestly, we right. add it to the fees based on the other three criteria, the, the availability of the documents, the complexity of, the, of it, and, and the size of the assets. Those are the three primary things that we look at. So if we determine based on the engineer that would be assigned the asset, that asset to conduct the survey on and do the study, uh, based on the actual travel expenses for that individual. So if it happened to come up to $612, let's just say that, uh, then that $612 is added to the, to the engineering costs that, that it would calculate. And then we round it down to the nearest, uh, uh, whole number. Uh, and, and typically it, in fact, we'll round it down typically to the next hundred dollar level to, uh, to give it to the benefit of the client because we want to provide the absolute best return on that, on that, uh, uh study as we can for them. Great. And so, and then also it's broken up by region. Is that correct? Like Absolutely. The actual cost of the materials and the, and the Absolutely, it is. And uh, in absence of actual cost data, we, you know, when we're using RS Means and Marshall and Swift, those are regional cost construction bibles. So they literally have every type of component known to man that can go into the building or land improvements uh, in it, and it's adjusted quarterly. So the IRS accepts that data. And when, in absence of those construction drawings or AIA documents or anything like that, uh, we use those because uh, when they accept it, it's, it makes it easy on us. The, there are six methods that the IRS allows to conduct a cost seg study. We only adhere to the top two. Engineering-based analyses based on either actual cost data, the, do the documents, or the recreated documents used in RS Means and Marshall and Swift. Great. And here's a, a good question from Doris on YouTube. Do you have a comprehensive itemized list of segregated components? Well, that's a, that's a great question. And I believe it or not, I get that question a lot. <clears throat> you know, if, if you want to see that, go look at the Marshall and Swift valuation guide. <laughs> and it's a little over 12,000 pages of building componentry. Uh, if you're an insomniac, uh, oh my goodness, <laughs> that's the best way to to get yourself a good night's sleep. But yes, you can. Both RS Means and Marshall and Swift both have those available. And again, they're quarterly. Uh, they allow for some minimal access to it, but in order to access the entire guide, you actually have to subscribe. Okay, very good. And then Brian Brian Ho, he wrote this kind of early on. But can you, here's the question. Can you use cost segregation for an existing property, not a new, not a new build? That's a great question. Absolutely. That's what we call the look back studies. And in fact, honestly, about 90% of our cost segregation work is done on assets that were acquired prior to the current tax year. And that's what's called a look back study. So remember, <clears throat> we can go back to 1987 with the IRS and carry forward all the unclaimed depreciation that you have not taken when you originally acquired it and give that those depreciation dollars, that tax savings to you in the current open tax year. <clears throat> now, of course, there's two types of long life depreciation, 39 year and 27 and a half, well, 39 and a half technically and 27 and a half year. 27 and a half year is, is residential rental property. That's regardless of whether it's a single family rental all the way up to a multifamily, multiple thousand unit. It's 27 and a half year. However, properties that are short-term rentals like Airbnb, of course, a hotel, motel as well, those are 39-year assets because it's not a residence. Somebody's not residing there. They're just simply using it just like a hotel facility. And hotel facilities are 39 and a half year assets. So if it is an asset that you're using for an, AB, an, a, an Airbnb, then it, it, it is a... 39 year asset. Normally we still break it down to the five, seven and 15 years that for the assets qualifying. Uh, so those look back studies are absolutely fantastic. They're a cash windfall. If you've owned an asset eight to 10 years, which is kind of the sweet spot for owning, um, then you're going to get all that depreciation for those years you haven't gotten in the current tax year using that 3115 and, and, and the 41A adjustment. Great. And here's a good question from Doris. I built some of my properties and went through building the building department. I have plans. Can calculations be done with building plans in hand? Yes, they can be. 
Yes, very. I'm a very straightforward guy. Yes, that's that's one of the things. I mean, we're always going to need uh, again the the proof of ownership because obviously, you know, we 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 don't want to do a study on an asset you don't own <laughs> uh, that won't do you any good. So we need the proof of ownership. That's why we look for the closing statement, the alter survey. Appraisals don't have to be provided if you don't obviously if you don't have one. Uh, but the uh, an appraisal gives us a lot of additional data that we can use to substantiate some of the componentry that we might value higher than say what RS, if, if you don't have full construction drawings, then what RS means or Marshall and Swift might have because they're using a comparative basis for assets that are directly in their area. And that really comes into play when you're in larger metropolitan areas, LA, New York, Boston, Chicago, San Francisco, Dallas, Oklahoma City, where the cost of, the cost of these assets are more than they are in the rural areas. Great. And here's one. Um, Gregory, he has a 15 unit building in Oakland, which was purchased in 1998. How does cost segregation apply to me? And so you mentioned the sweet spot and then you talked about 1987. So help us clarify. Yeah. 1998, we're looking at, you know, 22 years there of ownership. So uh, that's, that's, uh, that leaves about five years roughly left in that 27 and a half year asset. Now, believe it or not, that will pay off, but it's a one and done. You're going to get 100% of your five-year asset, 100% of your seven-year assets, 100% of your 15-year assets now. What's remaining? Now, you've owned it 22 years. So that means you're, you're going to go negative on the remaining depreciation. Now, what I mean when I say negative is all of your short-life assets are given to you using your 2020 tax year now in your 2020 tax year. You only have left the remaining 27 and a half year depreciation over these last five years to take. So it gives you a, a one-time nice little bump and then you, you just have your 27 and a half year depreciation left, which that's fine. Again, remember time value of money, your dollar is worth more. So if you can cash out, the best way to say it, if you can cash out the remaining depreciation that the, the dollars that the IRS is holding, that's your money and go ahead and take it. Why not do that? And with our guarantee of 200 to 500% ROI, you, you, you got no, you got nothing to lose and everything to gain. So, so depending on the size of the asset, because if it's a, if it's a million dollar property or more, we guarantee the 500% return. Then we're going to give you at least five times what you give us back. So if it's a, again, just make it up a $5,000 fee, then you're guaranteed going to get back $25,000 in tax savings. And the reason we know that is because when we do our initial analysis, we price everything knowing, I mean, come on, knowing we're going to achieve the numbers. I mean, that, that that's what the guarantee is there for, but you know, so, for you, that 22 years, you're only going to have five and a half years left, but it's still going to pay off because we do guarantee you that return. So um, just besides that, if I were to give you a $1 bill, would you give me a $5 bill back? <laughs> if you paid a dollar for it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, one thing. Now, we had mentioned that there was a uh, a uh, offer that you were going to give, and we didn't. when you wrapped up, we forgot to mention it. Could you tell... Share that with everybody. Absolutely. And I thank you for that reminder. <clears throat> First of all, for everybody who's on the live stream here today, if you do, if you mention this whenever you contact me, whether it's through online or directly contacting me, uh, <clears throat> and as a member of the AOA USA, you, we're going to give you a 20% discount off of our normal fees. Wow. If you have two to four properties, we'll give you 25% off. Now, now hold, hold on. If you have five or more, now, I hope you're sitting down because not, not I don't have me on the call, may have five large apartment complexes, <clears throat> but you may have five single family rentals or you may have five duplexes or a combination of duplexes and triplexes and maybe a fourplex or two. <clears throat> if you have five or more properties, 50% discount on the fees. Wow. And if they're all in the same area, that's only one set of travel expenses that we now get to, you know, spread over those multiple properties. So it, obviously we only have one airfare 
one rental car, one hotel, one one set of breakfast, lunch, and dinners for the engineer of record who's on site, which a lot of times is me because <laughs> uh, I do travel and do those site surveys as well. And you've got five properties. If that's travel expenses is six or seven hundred dollars, well, now you're down to a hundred dollars a property, you know, for the travel expenses. And to get fifty percent discount off of the normal fees, <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a double no brainer. Wow. Well, wow, thank you so much for that. That's incredible. And um, I, we really, we love to give our members just the, the best deal they can get and um, help them out in any way they can. They make such a small investment at $79 to get so much in so many different Absolutely. Ways. Absolutely. So that's and awesome. I, pardon me. I noticed another question here. You know, somebody asked, why bother? I mean, I'm, I'm going to get the deduction anyway. Well, that's a, <laughs> you know what? That's the truth. You're, you're going to, you're going to get the same depreciation if you maintain ownership for the full 27 and a half years or 39 and a half. If it's an Airbnb property, you're going to get the same depreciation. We're not printing money here. It's, but think about it again. It's the time value of money. So why bother? Why not? Why, why do it today? Because it's your money. And, and, and here, look, here's a way to look at it. You're giving the IRS an interest-free loan for the depreciation dollars that you're letting them keep because they're, they're not paying you interest on the depreciation. Are they? No. You know, if you don't pay the IRS, the taxes you owe and you go a year, you go two years. Well, guess what? They're charging you. And it's not a lot, but still they're charging you 3% interest on the money you haven't paid them plus penalties and interest and penalties on the interest and interest on the penalties. I mean, you know, they can, they come up with ways to continue charging you, but if you give them too much money by virtue of not getting the depreciation you're due, they don't pay you anything. So that's why you want to bother, quote unquote, and take advantage of cost segregation so that you get your money back from the IRS rather than letting them continue to hold on to your money. That's the, uh, right. and, you know, I mean, it, it, uh, again, that's what we call a no brainer in Texas. OK. <laughs> and, and I noticed another question. Somebody's asked just straight up, but kind of open. But how much will I save on taxes? Well, that's obviously based on the size of your asset, what you paid for. But I can give you a rule of thumb. Everybody look. I mean, get a pencil and paper, write this down. Makes no difference the size of the asset. But from a, a perspective of cost, here, here's, a, here's a little formula. If it's multifamily, you can, you can calculate that you could get approximately 4 to 5% of what you paid for it minus the land value in actual tax savings. Now the length of ownership is going to impact that. So if you've owned it for 10 years or longer, then that's, that number is going to start coming down to two and a half to 3%. But if you've owned it 10 years or shorter, about four to 5% of what you paid, again, just for the asset, not the land, you can see that in tax savings. So let's just say you've got a million dollar multifamily property. Then that's net of land. That means 40 at least forty to fifty thousand dollars in tax savings, in actual federal income tax, not including state income taxes. So, if you're in a state that has state income taxes, then this applies, and that's just bonus on this. That million dollar multifamily is going to run three to six thousand dollars, maybe give or take, just depending on where it again where it is, and all the how how uh, complex it is, how many buildings it is, but. Think about it. Even at six thousand dollars, you're saving. You're getting forty to fifty thousand dollars in tax savings. <laughs> what an ROI! I mean, right. you know, that's a that's just fantastic. Now, if, if you've got a smaller property, let's say you've got a hundred thousand dollar house, single family residence, that's a rental. Same numbers, four to five thousand dollars in tax savings for and that size property. Remember, it's a one percent cost basis. Uh, and <clears throat> if I didn't say that, let me repeat it. You can calculate for anything that's a quarter of a million dollars and under, it's 1% of the cost basis. So $100,000 property, that's a $1,000 fee that you're going to get four to $5,000 back on. Four to 500% return. <laughs> My goodness. I mean, you can't go anywhere else to get that kind of return on your money. And you're sitting on it. It's, it the, money is our, the money's in your walls of that, of that single family resident, condo, duplex, or whatever. So we just have a couple of minutes left here. I, I did notice that uh, Reverend Alameda 
is asking the question, they bought the rental income property in 1977 and had already taken a lot of years of depreciation. <clears throat> is it still possible to use the cost segregation? Well, on an asset in, in 1977, if the depreciation was actually begun at that point, that asset should be already fully depreciated. Right. Now, there is a caveat, though. Assets that age have most likely had more recent renovations or improvements. OK, mm -hmm. so renovations and, and that's something important to note here, everybody. If you've renovated or improved your asset. That qualifies as well. And if you've done it based on what you've just learned since September 28th of 2017, 100% of all the short life assets qualify for a full bonus. That means a full write off. So let's just say you went in and renovated your house and spent $50,000 on it and say 80% of that goes to just the non structural items. That's $40,000 in write off now. Well, I mean, if you're just in a 30% tax bracket, that's $12,000. Think about it, $12,000 in actual tax savings. And guess what? That price, that, that size property for renovations and everything, that'd be a $1,000 fee. $1,000 to get $12,000. I mean, again, right? it's almost hey, like printing money. Hey, Jeff, we're, we're coming up against this hard stop because we have the, the next uh, gotcha. prop, prop 19 aftermath. So just a quick parting word, any last word for us? Hey, listen, uh, this is something that everybody needs to do if you own the asset, especially if you've had it, you know, since 1987. Uh, but certainly the last 10 to 15 years of ownership or more, the, you're going to maximize the money coming out of it. Uh, it makes sense. And in fact, our average residential rental property owner sees a little over 1,400% ROI tax savings versus the fees. It, guys, it's your money. Yeah. Why wait? Thank you so much, Jeff. Really appreciate it. I think that you'll be, there's still some questions there and I know that you'll go to the chat hopefully and, and yes. answer some of those. We'll have the information and links and then they can contact you, get the PDF and find out more. If I knew of a grocery store where if I went there and gave them a buck, they'd give me five. I, th I think I'd tell my friends about it. So everybody Absolutely. please share. Absolutely. Share your friends. And give this a like if you if you like the content. And um, thank you. Please join AOA. Here's a good, compelling reason right here. Absolutely. And, um, yeah, thanks again, Jeff. Thank all of you for um, joining us. And we'll see you actually in 10 minutes at 11 o'clock. We're going to cover the uh, Prop 19 aftermath. And next week, we also have another live stream going. And that'll be a top five deductions that you can take for 2020. So lots of good information. Why pay Uncle Sam extra when you don't have to, right? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And I will be available. I'm going to get online right now and start answering questions via the live chat as well. Awesome. Thanks, guys. We'll talk to you later. God bless you. Take care. <laughs>